subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 24th of February. India launches 24-hour helpline for citizens stuck in Ukraine. Ukrainian envoy seeks PM Modi's help to resolve crisis. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan meets Russia's Putin in Moscow as conflict in Ukraine rages. And 22 Indian fishermen arrested, two boats seized by Sri Lankan Navy. And now for all the details. India on Thursday set up a 24 into 7 control room and issued helpline numbers for its citizens stuck in Ukraine after Russia launched a full-scale invasion of the country, with President Vladimir Putin terming it a special military operation. Meanwhile, Ukraine's envoy to India asked for new Delhi support in handling the crisis. India has said its stand is neutral and it hopes for a peaceful solution to the conflict. India's Foreign Ministry on Thursday set up a 24 into 7 control room and a helpline for its citizens stuck in Ukraine after Russia launched a full-scale invasion of the country, firing missiles at several cities and sent troops to breakaway regions after President Vladimir Putin authorized what he called a special military operation. The Indian embassy in Kyiv issued a slew of advisories and helpline numbers for Indian nationals stuck in Ukraine and said it remains open for help and alternate arrangements are being made to relocate citizens while the Ukrainian airspace was closed. Meanwhile, Ukraine's envoy to India asked for New Delhi's support in handling the crisis and activate high-level dialogue involving Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the leaders of Ukraine and Russia. I don't know how many world leaders Putin may listen to. But the status of Modi G makes me hopeful that in case of his strong voice, Putin at least should think over. We are expecting for much more favorable attitude of the Indian government in this crisis situation. Raj Kumar Ranjan Singh, junior foreign minister of India, had earlier said that India's stand is neutral and it hopes for a peaceful solution to the conflict. Indian nationals who arrived on the last flight from Ukraine early on Thursday expressed that the situation was deteriorating. काफी स्टूडेंट्स के अंदर और वहां के सिविलियंस के अंदर थोड़ा पैनिक का माहौल है तो फिर उसके बाद इंडियन गवर्नमेंट्स ने सारी रिस्ट्रिक्शंस हटाई हैं ताकि सारे बच्चे आ सकें और अभी अभी हमारी रिसेंटली बात हुई है फ्रेंड्स से जो अभी आना चाह रहे थे एयरपोर्ट पे भी वहां कुछ अटैक हुआ है तो वो बच्चे अभी नहीं आ पा रहे हैं वहां फंस गए हैं उनको वापस सिटी लेके जाया जा रहा है Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky called on all citizens who were ready to defend the country to come forward, saying Kyiv would issue weapons to everyone who wants them. Shelling was reported in several parts of the country while Western nations pledged to unleash a fresh package of sanctions against Russia till the last reports came in. Amid the ongoing assembly elections in India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state, Political parties have shifted their focus to the fifth phase polling, which will be held in 61 assembly segments across 12 districts. Speaking at a rally in Uttar Pradesh Amiti district, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ripped into opposition parties over dynastic politics. Ahead of the fifth phase of the assembly polls in India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a poll rally for his Bharatiya Janata Party in Amethi city on Thursday, where he ripped into opposition parties. BJP Bharatiya Janata Party's Smriti Irani defeated Congress's Rahul Gandhi in the 2019 parliamentary election, the first time since 1988 in Amethi, previously seen as Congress Party's stronghold. 
PM Modi sneered at the Congress and the Samajwadi Party, saying that family politics practiced by them is hurting the country. Samajwadi Party is seen as the biggest challenge for BJP. जो ये परिवारवादी लोग होते हैं, वो सत्ता में इसलिए आना चाहते हैं ताकि अपनी और अपने परिवार की ताकत बढ़ा सके और राजा महाराजा की तरह आप पर राज कर सके हमें किसी ताकत के लिए सत्ता नहीं चाहिए ना ही हमारी ताकत कोई बाहुबली या माफिया है हमारी ताकत उत्तर प्रदेश की जनता है पीएम मोदी सेड दैट ऑल फोकस ऑफ द डबल इंजन गवर्नमेंट्स इन द सेंटर एंड स्टेट हैड बीन ऑन डेवलपमेंट एंड वेलफेयर ऑफ द पीपल फिफ्थ फेज ऑफ पोलिंग इन उत्तर प्रदेश विल टेक प्लेस ऑन फेबर ट्वेंटी पाकिस्तान प्राइम मिनिस्टर इमरान खान मेड रशियन प्रेसिडेंट व्लादिमिर पुतिन ऑन थर्सडे इन मॉस्को एमिंग टू रीसेट बायोलिट्रल टाइस एंड एक्सपेंड कॉपोरेशन इन द एनर्जी सेक्टर एक्सपर्ट हाउ एवर टर्म द विजिट इल टाइम अमीद द रशिया यूक्रेन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan arrived in Moscow on a two-day official visit on Wednesday night where he was received at the airport by Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Igor Morgulov and accorded a guard of honor. On Thursday he met Russian President Vladimir Putin on a day Russia launched a full invasion of Ukraine amid an ongoing conflict. The details of the 3-hour meeting were not immediately known but the prime minister's office said the two leaders were expected to exchange views on global issues on mutual interest and discuss cooperation in energy and economic sector. The meeting came hours after the US president Joe Biden and other western governments imposed tough economic sanctions on Russia for sending its military into parts of eastern Ukraine. Commenting on the ill-timed trip The United States had on Wednesday said that it is the responsibility of every responsible country to voice objection to Russia's actions in Ukraine. Moving on, auto rickshaw drivers recently held a massive protest in Pakistan's Lahore city over skyrocketing fuel and gas prices and lamented they are on the brink of destitution. The protesters said they are fed up of Prime Minister Imran Khan's government as it has failed to control the soaring inflation. Scores of auto rickshaw drivers held a protest in Pakistan's Lahore city recently lamenting the hike in prices of fuel and liquefied petroleum gas or LPG and raised concern that it has brought them on the brink of destitution the protesters said the price of lpg has skyrocketed to rupees 200 per kilogram while petrol has reached rupees 159 per liter after the government bulldozed a mid year budget last month they said the soaring prices of all essential commodities has already made their survival difficult and they are now fed up of prime minister imran khan's failure to manage the ongoing economic crisis to koi puchne wala nahi hai हर चीज पे लुटेरे हैं और जो मंगाई है बेताशा है और खान साहब से हम बहुत ज्यादा तंग पड़ गए हैं क्योंकि एलपीजी पी जो है वो सत्तर रुपए किलो बिकनी चाहिए आज वो दो सौ रुपए किलो बिक रही है कोई पूछने वाला ही नहीं गुजारिश है दालें महंगी हैं दवाइयाँ महंगी हैं सब्जियां महंगी हैं चीनी महंगी है फीसें महंगी है एजुकेशन महंगी है इलाज बिकता है फरोख्त होता है वो खरीदना पड़ता है आप हमें बताएं हम जाएं तो जाएं किधर खास साहब की कोमल के पाँच साल पूरे होने को है कोई किसी किस्म का रिलीफ नहीं मिला अपोजिशन भी चोर है हुक्मरान ना अहल है और डाकू भी है मीन वाइल दी ऑपोजिशन पार्टी हैव गियर्ड अप टू मेक अ स्ट्रेटजी टू मूव अ नो ट्रस्ट मोशन इन दी पार्लियामेंट एंड आर ऑल्सो सीकिंग हेल्प फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट अलाइज थ्रू फ्रीकुंट मीटिंग्स Opposition Pakistan People's Party has also announced an anti-government long march rally on February 27 over rising inflation. The European Union and Central Asia Special Envoys for Afghanistan met in Tashkent on Wednesday to discuss Afghanistan's regional significance and the emerging situation in the country. 
A joint statement was issued following the meeting in which they called for the formation of an inclusive government in Afghanistan. The EU Special Representative for Afghanistan, Central Asia Special Envoys for Afghanistan and the EU Special Representative for Central Asia in a joint statement following a meeting in Tashkent called for the formation of an inclusive government in Afghanistan. The EU Special Envoy Thomas Nicholson in a series of tweets said that the representatives underlined the need for good governance, rule of law, human rights of all Afghans, in particular of women, girls, ethnic groups and minorities, and an inclusive government. They also expressed concerns over the Afghan humanitarian crisis and called for a concerted response by the international community. The envoys and representatives underscored the importance of averting Afghan soil from being used as a base for hosting, financing or exporting terrorism and violent extremism to other countries. The UN Security Council had in a recent report also raised concerns over the reconstitution of foreign terrorist groups in Afghanistan. The Islamic Emirate has previously said that there is no threat to any country from Afghan soil and denied reports of several organizations and remarks of Western officials about the presence of foreign terrorist groups in Afghanistan. Moving on, the Sri Lankan Navy arrested 22 Indian fishermen and seized two fishing trawlers for allegedly poaching in the country's territorial waters, an official statement said on Thursday. The Navy said the arrests were made in northern waters during a patrol carried out on Wednesday. They were indulging in bottom trawling. This was the fourth arrest of the Indian fishermen in the Sri Lankan waters this month. The arrest come as the local immigration officials are making arrangements to repatriate 56 Indian fishermen who were arrested in December. The fishermen issue is a contentious one in ties between New Delhi and Colombo. Earlier this month, the issue also figured in talks between India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar and his Sri Lankan counterpart G.L. Paris during the latter's three-day official visit to India. Fishermen from both countries frequently stray into each other's territory and end up spending years in jails. Renowned classical dancers from across the country are enthralling the audiences with their graceful classical moves at the ongoing 48th Khajuraho Dance Festival in India's central Madhya Pradesh state. The annual festival celebrates the spring season and aims to promote cultural and traditional dance forms. Classical dancers from across India have been mesmerizing the audiences with their delicate and graceful moves at the ongoing world-famous Khajuraho Dance Festival in the temple city of Khajuraho in India's central Madhya Pradesh state. These classical dance styles have emerged from the traditions of temples in India and depict an array of folk tales. The sculptures of Khujuraho in the backdrop are also in the form of these rhythmic dance postures and are the living tableau of Indian philosophy. Uh, today is very special for us because it's the 85th uh, performance of Krishna Mayam. So I think it's uh, really uh, a lucky number for us. And um, we are looking forward to come back here at Kajrao because we love the place and uh, the temples are so beautiful. I, I'm really glad that I got to know about it uh, pretty much by chance because I'm, I'm very much enjoying it. To showcase the rich cultural handicrafts and products of the state, local artisans have also put up various stalls. The annual dance festival that celebrates spring season began on February 20 and would conclude on February 26. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India launches 24-hour helpline for citizens stuck in Ukraine. Ukrainian envoy seeks PM Modi's help to resolve crisis. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan meets Russia's Putin in Moscow as conflict in Ukraine rages. And 22 Indian fishermen arrested, two boats seized by Sri Lankan Navy. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. TV brings you daily news bulletin from India.
breaking news and views from India.